That being said, Ray, my friend, it looks like we uh, there, they did move that one off stream, so instead we're gonna get everybody's favorite King of Judgment here, Marcus on the Game & Watch versus Haven, and it's making a big November any minute, but the Quarant is still out, this is a tried and true secondary, and when you have to pick between a guy with a big sword and Wario here against Game & Watch, I mean, I know what I'm picking, Yen. I have no idea, but... Warren has some really good aerials to go ahead and snuff out some of Marcus's initial game plan, so I'm interested to see that. But so far, Marcus has done a really good job of positioning them nice and close, getting these grabs, uppies, whatever they need to go ahead and get some damage racked up on Haven. And look at that, not quite able to find the berry off of the mallets, but that could have been a way to start the game. It would have been, but... Throws only moves and horses and hand grenades and my friend Snake was last set. So for now, it's just going to be, can we find these bombs? Can we find this advantage? They, Haven is playing this very measured. Forcing Gaiman wants to have to chase him down unless he can find that panel or catch him with a neutral or catch him with a forward air to find a way in. But even still, Marcus is picking his spots perfectly, finding the chinks in his armor and really punishing some of, some of Korn's more committal buttons. Now getting through ledge with the get up attack, and look at that. You just mentioned that you have to be careful with some of these middle aggressions, and twice in a row, Marcus getting the call out there, just positioning just right to stop Haven from being able to come through with some aggressive aerials. That is the other thing, is Game & Watch can be a little bit short, so that forces Haven in some situations to go for some landing aerials that they might not want to go for otherwise. But right as I say that, Marcus, it don't even matter. Getting the mallet to the torch, killing Haven off the side. His ability to find those hammers to trap your landing strap, even an air dodge through, is just incredible. He fuck calls you out in those, in those perfect positions time and time again. And I love that Beaver vs. Bucket there just to find his way to ledge faster, get himself actable a little bit quicker, and continue this edge guard. Gonna go the extra mile for that trouble and close at the stop. Corey has many strengths, but even with that back air, er, the recovery not necessarily there, right? It's too linear, it's too committal, you put yourself in lag for so much of your route back to stage that a character like Game & Watch, who just has an active hitbox, can clean it up and, and not worry too much about the effort they're putting into their day. Marcus played that one excellently and is going to go up 1-0 for his troubles. And in the meantime, just ch texting a friend, you know, hey, don't worry, I'll be there for dinner in just a moment, right after I make quick work of Haven. But you know what, Haven, I want to see what this guy has to say. This player is an immaculate man on the sticks, and I know broken fire back. He's just got to find his footing and get off the ground running in this game number two. Stop the battle. Mr. Haven, watch. We are gonna see the Wario. I am here for it. Oh man, Amazing it might not character. be. I was gonna say, it might not be as good in the matchup on paper, but you're going from your secondary to your main. And frankly, when your secondary gets stomped like that, it doesn't matter what the matchup is. You need to try something different. And and going back to the tried and true is, is that difference maker for Haven, especially with Loft on deck, especially when you say, hey, no matter how far behind I am, I'm always capable of just clutching one out. But we've seen Marcus have that same X factor with Judge. The question is just gonna be really this first stop. Who can find it? Who can get that little bit of an advantage and set the tone of the game? And so far, it's just been the Marcus show the entire time as he makes good progress towards a potential zero to death here. Yeah, Haven has done a pretty good job of avoiding some of these juggles. And right now, starting to light up a little bit, 52%. This is looking a lot better compared to game number one in terms of percentage. Now, finds another Nair. I love how he's just bobbing and weaving underneath Marcus, keeping the pressure rolling. Gets grabbed, though, and now it's Marcus's turn. And he's just, I like the way Marcus is playing this. He's not looking for the, the number of judges we normally see from him, right? He's not looking for all the flashy stuff. He's just playing very, very fundamental. And here, finding these advantages, finding the judges, and the pressure. Gonna throw out the side, the ulti up special, and clean up the special. The down to the close it out. Just crazy awareness there from Marcus to close that song. Looking so good, but Hayden's still not out of it yet. 91%. 
This is the theme with Game & Watch, bro, is very light, so you know Haven can find a kill at any point, but Marcus doing a really good job of avoiding it so far and finds a little bit of percent here with some of those tornadoes and that fish pole. 44 now for extra credit, looking pretty clean, but a back air from Haven to go ahead and reset the situation for them. Utilizing the B-Rose bucket as well, there, right, and get that extra aerial momentum to keep his events going, and the top special scooping from below, the parachute puts in so much work for Mr. Game and Watch, and not gonna stop it. Stop today. Marcus is just not even land at all here again. And I just wonder if it's kind of been back to the same small stage. It was really different. It was really what even want here. Well, hey, you know what? Haven did find that back air and now does got a shot as they've got the waft on deck. We could be seeing Marcus dropping another stock here in a second. But first, Haven got to get through. And sure enough, one bad parachute is all Haven needed to get on in. And now, trying to find the first starter, but Marcus is doing a really good job of playing safe between the parachutes to constantly keep in the air the forward airs to try to maintain some distance. But now Haven finds his shot, unable to land the clap to the fart, and so not going to be able to take that stock right there. So, not able to close out just yet, but, and with some extra attention, uh, gonna find him to save the up to Ross, gonna make like it's patch 3.0, my friend, and as Haven finds his way back into the lead for a moment, but, Game of Ross is the ultimate heel character, man, and what better way to play the heel than hit him with the chair? Now, nice and even, but at the same time, when we saw it even, Marcus was the one to take the lead, so Haven's gonna have to find some new ways to get Marcus out of this game number two, but it's gonna start off with a grab to fish to turtles. We are seeing the ocean right here as Marcus taking him on the trip of the seas and going right to the skies now. No way out for Haven so far. And watch the positioning Marcus is holding here, right? He's, he's playing over platform, under platform, drifting to center stage, and then fading back with his bomb, with his bomb to control that center space while still being under the platform to prevent the, these air, these falling aerials from coming in. And it's a look, I will put him to find this grab here, and even though he didn't find the continued advantage state, back up this huge advantage state, but now it's Haven's turn again, and Wario can rack up the damage on these jungles. Haven able, oh sorry, Marcus able to reset here, but if Haven can turn one more hit, this could spell trouble. And now the tornadoes sending him up, up and away. One hit. This could be all that's on the line here for Marcus. He takes a jab, but so far doing a pretty good job. Right as I say that though, an air dodge gonna get him caught. Living the down air. We saw that kill on the second stock or set up for a kill, I should say. Living a 170 full rage. This could still be good for Haven if he could just find something here. So I love that right there. Recognizing the command and grab Tyfer is gonna find the space and just Marcus, a mixture of being right, those small black zones here on top on small bodies, and also just not quite being ready for it with the DI. Gonna go again due to going in Haven's favor. And what we were questioning earlier, Ian, that small battle group counter kick, it evidently was what Haven needed because he came out on top in that game too. Mark is gonna send us right back in game three, showing us that yeah, he likes it too. But now the onus is gonna be on him to find his way to a victory here in game number three. Haven's the one riding the momentum um, in in terms of games, but it's been Marcus is in the set overall, and it's really just gonna be who's gonna win the immovable force or the unstoppable object. Or the, yeah. <laughs> I thought well, I flipped hey. out for a second. <laughs> hey, it'd be like that sometimes, you know what it'd be. Haven, though, taking a little bit of damage. He's the one flubbing for the first little bit, but right as I say that, man, Haven getting grabbed left and right. Marcus has just had a really good read on his shield timing so far. The barbecue's gonna go ahead and come through. Haven don't want to take a bite of that. Turtle taking a bite out of Haven, and now Parachute. This is looking so good for Marcus as he gets the key to the dunk.
And Marcus's positioning here, right, off stage, forcing us so many early up specials, saying, I don't need to find the kill immediately. I will force you out early or SD, and then I'm just going to clean it up after the fact. As a lot of be so much more efficient and clean up some of these after early than if he just went for a hit initially. You can see his awareness in terms of defensive positioning and, the, and ambiguity in terms of his offense looks has been immaculate so far, yeah. Now Haven taking it nice and slow right now. Gets the grab, turning Marcus's game plan on its head, but dash attack to get him right in the corner there. Now Haven looking to push the push a little bit forward, but Marcus is just doing a really good job of playing defensive and walling him out. But finally, drifting a little bit farther forward, Haven is able to find the stop. Yeah, man, get him. Finding Mario is finding his way to the stock, utilizing that occipital low, not for eyesight, but for some good old old common skull crack for good old fat and skull cracking, sorry. As he now just continues the pressure. Haven looking for the jungle here, but not able to find it. But Marcus, again, it's the positioning, it's the way he's keep landing in, in, in a way to keep ambiguous. Am I gonna jump to the platform? Am I gonna run off? Am I I can hey, I can still go to life because I'm not all the way at the edge of this platform? Or am I gonna drop with fair? Right. Haven doesn't know because Marcus has never limited him in his, his options based on his positioning once this set so far. And now Haven with full waft on deck though might be able to find a way through. We saw it in that game number two. Question becomes, where do you what hit do you find? Turtle setting up for a little bit of an edge guard. We're seeing the cyclones come through once more. Marcus doing a really good job of repositioning and finding the extra hits to extend the advantage state. And now the barbecue on deck. Ah, Haven gonna slip on with those knuckles. And even though it's kill percent now, I really like this game plan so far from Marcus. It was like Game & Watch is a character we're used to seeing juggling vertically for percent and then horizontally only to find the kill. But Marcus has been pushing Haven in, in horizontally a lot more than vertically in this entire set long because when that is above you, he can use that air drift, right? He can get out of God and it's way harder for Game & Watch to pin him down. Or when he's locked in the corner, he still has, he just... That air bug doesn't make as much of a difference against the active disjoints that Game & Watch can draw with fair and fair. Now, Haven's been getting a little bit aggressive up close to Marcus. The issue is, when you get aggressive, you get caught up by the trampoline into the parachute. Finds the grab now though, Haven searching, fiending for a stock, but if Marcus just can hold on to this stock, this could be a clean game, but if he drops it, that's where it gets scary. That's where you might be going to loser's side because at any point, Wario can just blow you to smithereens. Yes, sir, man. We've been chomping that garlic just in case it comes in in court. Looking for the backer, you can see Haven knows that my, his percent climbing, his opportunities to find this stock are starting to close. And you gotta do so over the beautiful bait there. It's expected. The hit stomach, the high extension. Instead, he even covered it, and Marcus is just gonna close out the edge guard, clean it up, not give him even the.